Hey right, everybody, my name is Lucas. I am here with the Ultimate Fan Experience Media, and I am sitting here with the Ultimate Fan Experience graphic designer, aka the artist behind the Ultimate Fan Experience, Dave Fretz. What's going on, man? Hey, man, I'm doing well. How about you? I'm doing great, man. It's uh, it's great to finally sit down with you and get to talk to you about uh, your Picasso-like work. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. I appreciate it. Well, uh, let's get started. Uh, just, I just want to sure. ask you about uh, your background. Um, did you always were you always really good on the computer as far as graphic design goes? Did you go to college for this kind of stuff? I so this is all um, self taught. Um, actually, my education um, in college was all in marketing. Marketing is my background. I always loved the sort of the why and the strategy behind sales and. Um, um, marketing products, selling to people, um, and promotion. I uh, worked in music for 10 years uh, prior to this. Um, did a lot of different sales and marketing jobs. And uh, while I was in music, uh, I got into photography and uh, just taking pictures of bands and different artists. Um, <clears throat> then on the tail end of that, I'm sure as most photographers can attest to, you get people ask, oh, do you also do... Um, graphic design can you design like a, a cover back when I was doing music sorry it was CDs back in those days you know can you do packaging for our CD and stuff like that and so just kind of fell into my lap and I just started to play with it um, I was actually living out in uh, uh, central Canada uh, working um, in uh, siding soffit and, and fascia out in the middle of, of winter in Winnipeg and um, and so uh, it gets super cold um, Side note, Winnipeg has like some of the highest temperatures in the summers and lowest temperatures in the winter. So it's got in the world like some of the greatest temperature differences of anywhere in the world. And so working in working outdoors in, in the middle of winter, you get a lot of spare time because sometimes it's so cold or so windy couldn't work. Uh, and so I just started fooling around on the computer and yeah, all this kind of fell into the graphic design thing kind of fell into my lap just through kind of trial and error. For sure. What kind of uh, what kind of practice have you had? Like, um, I, I know you said you kind of just self-taught, but mm -hmm. what are the things that you learned along the way to become so proficient? Are you going on YouTube and looking? Are you talking to other graphic designers as well? Yeah, you know what? A lot of all of the above. Um, I I actually so once I started to fool around with it, I um, um, I actually the, my very first sort of experience, kind of funny enough, was working as. Um, a volunteer graphic designer at a church and uh, uh, my wife and I were out in uh, Manitoba and uh, we were attending this church out there and um, because I had so much spare time they needed some help with it and somebody just told me you know hey you've got an artistic eye can you can you try this and I said well I, you know like I don't have any of the software or anything and so on my days off from installing siding I would go into the church and they had several computers there with uh, the Adobe suite on it and I would just mess around and so I built up a, a, a portfolio doing graphic design for a church. Mind you, it was a huge church. It was like 3,000 people there, so some pretty big jobs. But um, yeah, then I went and applied at a college for a graphic design position after a year of just messing around at this church and got a job. So something that started as a volunteer thing um, turned into some work. Because, I mean, like you have to be passionate about something, right? So I fell in love with it right away. I loved like. I would go and do stuff at work when I started for this college and then I would come home and sit down at the computer and start to play. And so, yeah. And so then I'd go and look at tutorials on YouTube um, and then sort of falling into the MMA sphere of things. I was working um, in the medical industry um, in, in sales and marketing uh, as an outdoor outside salesperson. And um, once COVID hit, you know, I couldn't get out of my house. Like there was no going anywhere at the beginning. So we, we didn't really know what it was going to be like. And so my company had me just shut up in my office sending emails. And so I did that, but then I stumbled across MMA Twitter because I've always been a fan of, of uh, combat sports. And uh, I saw other people doing fan art and I just kind of thought I can do that. And so I started playing around with stuff and, uh, you know, fighters started to take notice um, and uh, it becomes a bit of addicting. Um, it actually kind of all started with, I started a little company called Solo Shoes. Uh, those that have been around MMA Twitter for a while will remember that. I actually was doing um, um, graffiti on shoes and uh, I gave away three pairs. The first pair I gave was to, um, shout out to uh, Joe Gianetti. I've been with him since, uh, you know, just after his um, Ultimate Fighter days. 
Um, Joe is the uh, light and welterweight champion for Cage Titans. And so I did him up a pair of uh, custom pair of uh, Skeletor um, uh, Air Force One lows. So he's got a pair of those that I painted up for him. And then Josh Hill and Bellator is another bantam weight. Uh, he's local to me. And um, I did up a pair of Violent Gentleman shoes for him. And then Mark Coleman, uh, shout out to the original uh, heavyweight, UFC heavyweight champ. I did up a pair of um, Godfather of Ground and Pound shoes and a hat for him. And he ended up on the cover of a, of a Sports Illustrated Daily wearing those. And so it kind of oh. just, yeah, it kind of took off from there. And then I started in with the digital art and here we are today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? congratulations, man. That's truly a uh, rags to riches type story there. Totally. Yeah, 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 man. So what was that like when you first got started uh, into MMA when these just big name people are in your DMs? Hey, can you do this for me? Hey, can you do that for me? It was it kind of surreal to a certain degree because you said you're a combat sport fan your whole life and now you're interacting with these people. It's still surreal, man. Like it, 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 that never goes away. So, yeah, for any of those out there that are trying to make it and just kind of like this mystique and the love for the sport and the passion for the sport. Um, I hope Calvin Cater sees this because um, I work for Calvin on the side for his um, for his uh, promotion. He uh, and his brother uh, Jameson run uh, Combat Zone in uh, New England. Awesome promotion, um, great staff. Shout out to Jerome and Martin that I work with there too. Great group of guys. But um, like the first time I talked to Calvin, <laughs> in all honesty, I mean I'm sure you can attest to this. It was like I really had to focus on what he was saying to me because the whole time in my head, it was kind of like, I'm talking to Calvin Cater right now. This is so <laughs> weird, you know? And so you have to kind of, it's like, okay, focus. What, what does he need from me? And what is he asking for me? And so, yeah, man, it, you know what? It's totally fun. And it just, I, I love the fight game, like totally love the fight game. And so to, to have the privilege to work and, and have it provide for my family um, within the industry is I couldn't be more thankful, you know, for that. It's it's amazing, and I've met the coolest people along the way, and um, really gracious people, um, some not so gracious people, like in anything. <laughs> but you know, for the most part, awesome, awesome people. I love all aspects of fight. Honestly, while I'm beside this computer here, over to my left is another computer, and then a laptop over here, and I have fights going all day long as I'm working. I just there's there's always fights playing in my office, and so my eight-year-old son, you know, he starts to get to know the fighters and tells me who his favorite fighters are. And we've got him in Kung Fu. And it's just, it's, it's so much fun, man. I just absolutely love it. Dave Fretz here joining us on the Ultimate Fan Experience Media. Uh, Dave, we, we spoke a little bit about um, recently, you know, it's surreal being able to meet these fighters, being able to talk to these fighters and, and just the love that you keep growing for the sport. And one thing that you're a part of now, as I'm a part of as well, is the Ultimate Fan Experience. It's a mm -hmm. digital collectible that allows you to uh, have experiences with these fans. For example, Nico Price, uh, who is currently signed under the Ultimate Fan Experience. You can go to training camps with him. You can go on fishing trips with him. You can talk in the Discord with him. It's truly uh, a unique and amazing experience, I think. What are your thoughts on being part of the team and being a graphic designer for the team? Yeah, like, I mean, so as a like at the base of everything at the heart of it all i'm just a fan right you know that has been lucky enough uh fortunate enough uh maybe not lucky like it's it's a lot of hard work you know and and my wife can attest like shout out to my wife for letting me try you know like even just it's like uh, a, a year ago this past may i just quit my job and i walked away and said i'm gonna do this full time and and thankfully congratulations uh, Thank you very much. Yeah, it's worked. And um, I've got some awesome clients, uh, New England Cartel, shout out to Tyson Chartier. And those guys, uh, they're amazing. They give me a lot of work and uh, I'm working for them regularly. And um, yeah, just through a few customers like that, a few clients like that, I've been able to keep going full time. And um, yeah, man, it, it, it to be a part of this, especially for something like the Ultimate Fan Experience that appeals to me just as a fan so greatly it's um it's wild it's so i mean like seeing i just right before our interview i just retweeted nico out there saying you know you you, you know the chance number two for a fan experience you can either train with me or go fishing i love fishing man like going fishing with nico on a fishing trip <laughs> dude 
that would be amazing. That would be the stories you could come back with. I don't know how many fans saw on his social media when he was fishing from his balcony at UFC Orlando. I mean, <laughs> that was amazing. That. That's that's true passion if I've ever seen it. Yes, you know, so totally cool. So hey, fans, listen up out there right now until Friday. You've got you can look go find um, uh, at UFE dot NFT on Twitter, and you you know you can have your chance as well to uh, to get in this fan experience. Um, Th- that would be a dream for me. That would be amazing. Uh, and so to be a part of this, yeah, it's just fun, you know, um, being able to see Hunter in his first experience train with Nico and just thinking, wow, you know, that that could be me. That could be anybody. That could be any of us, you know. Um, MMA as a sport is still relatively young. Like I remember a time when there was no such thing as mixed martial arts. Mm-hmm. You know, it was when the when the UFC first started, um, that's really when I got into it, and, and it was all about style versus style. And so because the sport is relatively new, I think there's still really great opportunity. It's the perfect time for a company like UFE to embed themselves in the culture, in, embed themselves in the industry with the fighters because, I mean, th- think about trying to get close to Michael Jordan or LeBron James or something like that. Like, it's not a... It's not obtainable, um, but we're fortunate enough to be fans of a sport where it is. It's possible, and as you meet these guys, you realize they're real people, um, you know, uh, and uh, they've got you know passions and 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 pastimes and things that we share, you know. And uh, as a fan, I mean, Hunter can attest to this too. Hunter was the first person that we sent in to train. Now he's working for us. I mean, there's so much opportunity in a sport that is still so young, it's in its relative infancy that this is such an exciting time to be a part of something like this for sure. Well said, well said. Uh, Dave, you seem like the kind of guy uh, with your involvement in MMA. I'm sure you have a lot of opportunities lingering uh, in the field of what you can uh, put yourself a part of. Why mm-hmm. did you choose Ultimate Fan Experience? I know you're a fan. I know that a lot of the things that uh, Safe, the CEO of the Ultimate Fan Experience, uh, brought to you, I'm sure were very appealing. But what was the selling point for you? <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> Garrett Kerman, shout out. Uh, I hope I'm saying your name right, but uh, he and I have connected on uh, Twitter and on Facebook, and that dude is watching out for me. You know, he's a fan of my art, which I I really appreciate. And he forwarded me um, Nico's pitch. Said, "Hey, I'm looking for a digital artist," and I'm just like, oh, you know, I'm always kind of checking out experiences. And and again, because I'm a fan, um, it was like, ah, oh, cool. You know, like Nico needs an artist, and so I sent I sent it in to Nico. And then it was Safe that replied back to me. And Safe and I just got talking. And in speaking with Safe, it just, I mean, his passion for the sport as well and his excitement to connect with athletes, it was inspiring. You know what I mean? Like, it just, it's like, oh, shoot, this guy is sharing the exact same passions that I am. Um, and uh, I, I knew right away, in terms of, as a fan of a sport, like, you know, you think about we as fans, what is sort of the ultimate, if you will, experience? Like, what do you want as a fan? It's the opportunity to be able to connect with these people that you're watching. And to me, kind of doing superhuman things, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, in some sort of way, it's like, I can go out and train, I could, I'm, my, my age has sort of missed that boat for me. But <laughs> like, I can see if this was prevalent when I was a younger man, you know, I I would have totally gotten into this. But I love MMA because I think to me it's the ultimate test of the human body in terms of its performance, the mental aspect, the mind to be able to overcome fear, uh, to do things in spite of fear. You know, I truly don't believe any of these guys that get in there and say, I wasn't hurt, I wasn't afraid, I wasn't I, I don't think that. I think it's I think there's something else to an individual that fights that is almost it's like you know the different reactions of terms of fight flight or freeze you know what what people do in in terms of that and those people just have this extra they fight you know that they can do it like being brave is not doing something because you're not afraid it's doing something in spite of the fear you know and um that is fascinating to me and then in terms of the physical like what these guys can do 
Like I remember, like talk about a fan moment, like Anthony Pettis kicking Benson Henderson off uh, his running kick off the cage. Like we always, we all have these moments where you think, or um, Edson Barbosa's wheel kick to Terry Adam. I can't remember what UFC that was years ago, but you think about some of these things and it's like, that's a video game, you know? I mean, that's amazing. And so, yeah, the opportunity to connect with these people and find out they are real people just like me and they have passions. Like to see Nico fishing from his balcony at UFC Orlando, it's like, this is so cool. You know, that guy's just not always in the gym. He's got whatever it is, six kids, six kids, and he loves to fish. And he's got his brood of kids just run around out there. It's amazing. To me, this is so great. Like, uh, And so to be able to get that close, uh, Safe just sold that to me because of his passion. And um, the guy wants to share his passion with everybody so much that it's. I just kind of felt like I can't not be involved in this. It's just so, such a cool experience, opportunity. And I haven't, I mean, I've only been working in the industry for three years now, but I haven't come across anything like it. And I just absolutely was sold the moment I heard about it. Speaking about yourself working in the industry, uh, the biggest platform <laughs> for people to discuss MMA uh, in forms terms is something called Twitter. Uh, Twitter <laughs> is is huge for MMA, uh, MMA Twitter. A lot of people hashtag it. And mm -hmm. you're very active on Twitter. You talk to these fighters. You said a conversation cool. uh, with Chris Lieben on uh, Twitter where he calls <laughs> you his brother. Uh, he's an OG <laughs> of UFC for people that don't know. What's the buzz like for the Ultimate Fan Experience on Twitter? Because I'm sure a lot of these fighters you talk to, I'm sure they have a thing or two to say and thing or two to ask about it. Yeah. You know, um, it's interesting. I think there's so much. I mean, MMA Twitter has become such a big community. Um, when I first started on a few years ago, it was, it still felt relatively small, to be honest. Like um, that conversation with Chris started because of um, the super fan account. McGregor Rousey, um, my, that was my first experience was he put out this series of DMs to fighters where he, he was slipping into the fighters DMs and asking them ultimate, like the ultimate cringy questions, you know, like under the guise of, hey, I'm a really big fan. Uh, do you have time for a question from a, from a fan? And they were, yeah, no problem, you know, and then he'd ask things like, uh, Hey, can I crash at your place for a couple months just till I get back on my feet? Like stuff like this. It's do you just... do you think that was real or do you think that was photoshopped? No, it's totally real. I talked to Chris. <laughs> I, so I talked to Chris Lieben about it, and he it is totally real. And like Alexander Volkanovsky um, did it as well too. And it actually took it took Volk a few days to get back to him because the question came in, and I think it was like the question of Volkanovsky. I think was something about. Um, you know, my, the birth of my son was is coming up, and I'm I'm hoping that you can be there. Do you think this is possible? You know, <laughs> so uh, Volk went and and searched out the guy's account and sort of went through his tweets to see what he was about, and then he came back. He's like, "Okay, I'm glad that I uh, that I uh, I looked at your account and saw that it's kind of you know you're, you're doing this as for fun." He said because it was really awkward there for a moment, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. And so, yeah, you know, it's just kind of that that sort of whole vibe and stuff. Um, I think people are curious about um, UFE at this point, but they're not sure. Like, I think you get this whole vibe of, hey, is this is this real? Like, there's so many things, I think, that come and go. And so I really hope that people get a chance to see, you know, Hunter's experience going in and training at Syndicate uh, with Nico and um, whatever pops up next. Like, Man, I would love to see somebody go fishing with Nico. If they go, if they choose to go train again, that's cool. You know, it's up to whoever gets it. But this is happening. This is for real. And for fans who want something more than, hey, so and so liked my tweet. Somebody said thank you. A fighter said thank you to one of my tweets. If you want something more than that, this is an opportunity, and it's it's open and it's available to anybody. And so, yeah, I think I think the response is good. But I think kind of people are waiting at this point to see, you know. Hey, is this really real? And so I'm excited to watch that kind of play out. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, and uh, yourself being on the inside, um, there's a lot of great things to come for UFE. Currently, we have uh, Therese Finney signed, uh, just an absolute man amongst men down there in Georgia. <laughs> the guy is a 5-0 uh, and o middleweight, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he's looking mm -hmm. to make his UFC berth coming up here. And then uh, across the pond in Wisconsin, uh, there's Jordan Newman. Uh, Jordan, not human Newman, uh, fighting yeah. in Bellator. And, geez, he is... 
a man amongst men, just like Therese Finney as well. A machine. Um, a machine. Just great guys yeah. to have on the team, and uh, there's mm-hmm. even bigger guys to come. But mm-hmm. I think, like you're saying, once the Ultimate Fan Experience uh, proves it, once the Ultimate Fan Experience is able to deliver consistently, which is the plan and which is going to happen, I think it's going to be huge in the MMA community. Yeah, I agree. Um there is a lot of interest from fighters and I mean I know you and I both know that kind of the inside track and the people we've been talking to but um, this kind of opportunity is not readily available out there and I think the biggest thing for fighters and that I hope that they can understand and realize is there's two there's two tracks and two paths you know with with UFE the the fan pass which sort of for fans allows them to take part in all the different rewards and things that UFE can offer. But for fighters, the, the fighter collection NFTs, um, like Nico's will be coming out next year. Nico owns those like that. That is for Nico. We are simply the platform that he is using to launch that. And so for fighters out there that are wanting to do their own thing, you know, ours is a platform that will allow them to do that. Um, and fans can still, you know, participate with the fighter collections without even, you know, having a fan pass. But this just really allows fans from so many different avenues to really connect with fighters. And that those fighter collections as well will have their own benefits and rewards and things to fans. So it, it's just such a a great networking tool for the community, for fans and fighters alike um, to connect and to celebrate. I like. I, you know, Safe always says to cel- celebrate their fandom, you know, and um, I'm such a fan of this sport. I, this is such a cool thing to be involved in, and I really can't wait to, to see it all play out. Dave, before I let you get back to your busy Tuesday, I wanted yeah. to ask you one question that might, that might put you on the spot here. It might be a tough question okay. to ask. What <laughs> is the storyline that you're most looking forward to in 2023 for the UFC? There's so many of them. might be hard to pick one. <sighs> Okay, so no, you know what? I I think right off, I can I can tell you that I am super fascinated to see um, Alexander Volkanovsky fight um, Islam Makachev. Um, if I had to pick right now, shoot, it's hard to say because I love I love Volkanovsky. This is such a mountain to climb, you know. Um, <clears throat> I would hate to like. I would say I would never bet against Makachev at this point. I mean, to me, um, in terms of uh, their resume of experience right now, Volkanov- Volkanovsky has really proved himself uh, against the very elite of 145. But um, Makachev is a different beast. And anybody coming out of that camp, like I just think anybody training under um, the whole... Nurmagomedov system and family. Uh, there's something different there. There's absolutely something different. They train and produce champions, uh, guys that just seemingly don't know how to quit, don't know when to stop working and training and, and improving and getting better. And so um, I'm so curious to see kind of what path Volkanov- Volkanovsky takes to try and fight that fight. And can he do any better? than anybody before him, you know, that has tried against Makachev. Um, can Makachev be better than Khabib was? You know, it, 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 to me, it's a really, really interesting storyline. Then uh, probably a close second, you know, um, some may not always agree with his lifestyle, and, and certainly I would be the same, but it's hard not to be excited to see John Jones come back and compete, you know. Uh, so there's lots of stuff happening in 2023, um, and uh I feel like I have set myself up really well to be part of all of it just by being a part of, of UFE. And so super exciting year ahead to come for sure. Absolutely. Super exciting year ahead. Don't miss it. Uh, follow everything you can through the Ultimate Fan Experience. We got Twitter. We got Instagram. We're going to be posting weekly vlogs. Make sure you're following it. We're going to cover it the best. Thanks, Dave, for joining us on the interview. And I am looking forward to talking to you soon, man. Awesome, man. Appreciate it. Thank you.